Finally made it. The Rock Island. Rock Island. It's been on the list forever. We need to go explore. Like we've only walked one little trail. There's a lot to do. It's beautiful down here. I recommend this one. All right. So yes, we are in Rock Island, Tennessee. So it's just northeast of McMinnville. It took us about two hours. It was about a two-hour drive from our home, which is out towards Maryville, Knoxville area. So we came west. You get the hour time change, which is always nice. Uh, but we started over here on the east side of the Kine. Uh There's a Twin Falls hike uh, where you go downstream. It's about 1.6 miles. It took us 45 minutes or so just kind of cruising and just having some fun and observing everything. But you get a great shot of Twin Falls from this side. We're going to head over to the other side now of the Kine, where the campground is. It takes about 10-15 minutes to get over to the other side, but there's plenty more hiking trails on that side. But like I said, this was the Twin Falls and Downstream Trail. Very easy, moderate. There's a couple little ups and downs just with some stairs. Uh, but anybody that can go out physically for a, a nice walk in the afternoon or something would have no problem doing it. Obviously, if you're in a wheelchair or a walker or something and you have some sort of uh, physical ailment, you wouldn't be able to do it. But it is a very easy trail. Kids were kids go down it, they have a great time. There was an older couple going. We're a, a, a mid-range couple, so it was all over the board. Everyone was enjoying it just to give some feedback of who could actually hike that. Uh, but it's amazing. That is a beautiful site. Uh, highly recommend it. 
Yeah. You have fun on that one? I think that was good. I think this is a great one, and this is just the start, like I said. There's plenty more trails we're gonna go explore over there. They only have this one parking lot. There's a few parking spots down there by the uh, TVA stuff, but there is not a lot of parking. So I can imagine in summertime and spring, once the temperatures start to warm up, this place probably gets pretty busy. So I would get here early, get it out of the way if you're coming to the Twin Falls side, just so you don't have to deal with the parking issues. But I imagine it gets pretty busy over here, because this is, this is amazing. This is beautiful beyond belief. Where are we at, babe? We're on the other side of the river. We're going to explore the cotton mill and check things out. Honey, did you look both ways? I looked both ways before coffee. She is dangerous. Just a rebel. This little thing. What is it? Spring castle. That's kind of cool. This little spring provided water for the mill and the houses around as well as fire protection. Fresh water right there. It's mountain spring, baby. You need some water to refill your bottle. Honey. What are you doing in here? You working? So old that it doesn't even work. It'll work. It's good. Hey, honey. Hi. It's Hi. so cool seeing all this older stuff here that's still around and standing. There's so much to explore in Tennessee. It would take us forever to see everything. You gotta look this time? I looked last time. Hey. 10 years? So it says the cotton mill was only open 10 years because there was a great flood in 1902 and it destroyed many of the mills in the region. It's situa situated up here on the bluff, right up on the top. So that way the Kene, when it did flood, it didn't flood the structure, it just flooded the inside and took the turbine. So that's why they were forced to close it because the turbine washed away, which turbines are huge. So that must've been a lot of water. It had 300 workers, predominantly widows and children. That's crazy. That's crazy. And the, it says this little booming city of Falls City had its own blacksmith, post office, farmer's market, and a store of company products. That was it. It's kind of cool, huh? Since 1892 and this thing's still standing perfect compared to cheap stuff that's made today. So one thing to note, if you do come across to the other side, to the mill on the actual park side, not the Twin Falls parking lot side, there are restrooms and drinking fountains. Don't know if the drinking fountains will be on right now because it's winter time, but there are restrooms on this side. There are no restrooms on the Twin Falls side. Next stop on the uh, Rock Island tour, the Cunningham Cemetery. We like old cemeteries. Y'all know we like old cemeteries. We're gonna go see what this is all about. It's like this area. The so Babs was just trying to describe to me her like pelvic area was hurting, she said, from riding the bike yesterday, the stationary bike. And her first description was where your butt cheeks go under to the front. <laughs> I never good at That's why I love you, honey. Where the butt cheeks go under to the front. Was it 1836? Man, if you're gonna be, if you're be buried in a cemetery, this is in a bad spot right up above the river on this little bluff. Woo. I think it's so cool because in California, you had these mass, massive cemeteries, Forest Lawn, like all these big ones that you would, you know, even in Corona, there was one up, what was it off, Magnolia? Yeah, right by And didn't they get like busted for like stacking bodies or something, yeah. like weird? But you come back here and it's like all these little towns and communities, even our little area, each little like neighborhood and stuff has their own cemetery and you're buried where you grew up, where you lived and where the family roots were and continues on. I think it's so cool. Like that's how it should be. Well, that fig you figure Forest Lawn has got to run out of places to put people. That's probably why they you would think. stack people on top of each other. But still like what, a, what kind of, that's kind of crazy stacking bodies on top of each other. Like yeah. it's just cool back here. We, we like the, we, that's why we like coming to the cemeteries. It's respectful we think. And it's cool to see the families together and it kind of gives you history and marks the history of the area for for you and your family i guess i mean to me it's just like 
you bury your dog under your your tree right like your family tree in the front yard or something because you want the dog to be there and part of you like hey whoever lives in my parents house now they're just gonna have a dead pig name dogs pig i mean ethel's Volkswagen. Under, ethel's under the palm trees in the backyard yeah but you want you want like family close right you don't have to go see them. 1969. Alright, so this is one thing Babs and I wanted to check out while we were out here was the campground. They've got a campground. We would like to come camping. It'd be cool. She looked it up uh, yesterday. They have showers. They have camping available for tents. Which road is closed, so you can't camp right now, obviously. But So they must not be open for the season. That's probably why you couldn't book a... Probably. For a tent. Hmm. All right. So that's kind of cool. They got bathrooms. You said they had showers, right? I look like it on the... And this is a good size little campground right here. You got tent pads, which are nice. So, fire pit, table, water, electric, tent pad, barbecue, lantern holder if you want it, power. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now it did say when you came in, no pop-ups or trailers. This is tent only. They do have an RV campsite. So it is kind of nice that you do have power here if you needed it to blow up like mattresses or something if you don't have batteries and all that. Nice but to make coffee in the morning. Like I think, girl. That's why I bring her, see? So this little spot we came to is called a picnicking and play yard. And there are, there's a workout place. There's one, two, three, three playgrounds for kids. There's sand volleyball. There's all these huge little gazebos and, and areas you could reserve for groups and parties it says you just got to give three days of notice there's horseshoe pits right here it says there's a gorge overlook so that's where we're going to walk to right now and check out oh they got basketball too look you bring you bring a b-ball you ball up babs you think you could dunk i don't think i could almost that we saw from the other side Look at that. Okay, so I can't see really. Okay, so parking lot, that's where we were, Twin Falls. Twin Falls are right here along this, this rock line. Back there is your cotton mill back here. And then you can go down here, there's a few more trails. I'm like confused right now because I don't know where this water is coming from. Babs and I cannot figure this out. We didn't read on this. The water just straight comes out of the hill now there's another river on this other side, so I don't know if it's that's what's contributing to the fall. We didn't look this up or anything, so right now if we sound like we don't know what we're talking about, it's because we don't. We didn't look it up or anything, but literally the water comes right out of the side of the rock. Okay, so I had to look it up. I had to look it up because that's just mind boggling right now. So, Twin Falls is not a natural waterfall. It's a byproduct of the damming of the Kene Fork River and the powerhouse. The dam backed up the Kenai Fork and Collins River. The Collins flows into the Kenai about a mile upstream of Twin Falls, so back up there past the mill where we were at. But at the point, the two rivers are only a thousand feet apart. So right now, you got a thousand feet between the two rivers. Water is diverted from the Collins to feed the powerhouse along the man-made channels, but the water also found its own path through the limestone to feed Twin Falls. The water pours out of the gorge walls about 80 feet above the Kenai Fork River and about 40 feet below the top of the gorge. The dam was originally built in 1920. So that water is being pumped through with the powerhouse and it's making its way naturally through the limestone. That's a lot of water. So naturally come through the limestone a thousand feet apart. That's pretty wild. That's a very big range. Um, see, it was bugging me, so I had to look it up, because that's, that's a lot of water to come through just like that. So we have covered a lot of area already, and there's still more to cover, too. This is a, a full day thing, so that's why this vlog's a little bit longer and extended. Oh. Some people like the long format stuff. Full day event. It, there's so much to do out here. It's just, it's really it's fun. Endless. It's endless. That's why I wanted to share it with everybody, just so if you want to plan out camping or plan out your day to come out here, just know that... You can make a full day of this and it's full, full family fun. Full Pack family fun. A picnic. Pack a picnic. I'm hungry. We should eat. We should. Let's eat. Babs is hungry. 
We're gonna go check this one out, the Blue Hole. Deep pools in the Blue Hole area on the Canet Fork have been revered as one of Tennessee's finest fishing hotspots. Walleye, black crappie, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, bluegill. If you like to fish, this could be a good spot. Even if it was the best fishing spot, Mark would never catch a fish. Okay, so you got two trails right here. We're going with the Blue Hole Trail. 0.5 mile, but strenuous. So we'll see how that goes. Eagle Trail, not sure where that forks off, but we'll find out. Very cool trail, but very slippery. That's why, find out why it's strenuous. I'm, just take your time, take your time. And be better, be better, okay? Come on. Some, on some of those, my feet were slipping. You definitely need to take your time. Right? Yeah, that's uh, definitely strenuous and definitely, definitely slippery. Oh. Yep. Take your time, honey. And I, it's a board that yeah. I on. So the steps, like this whole area is kind of flooded over. I don't know what it's normally like, but the steps all have that algae on them. So they do get very slippery. If you do hike this, I, I recommend hiking boots. A good pair of traction and water resistant, waterproof if you can. You got tennis shoes, you're gonna, you're gonna be hating it once you go back up. I love how far she's come. She she knows how to navigate her path. She's getting good at scrambling. I'm so proud of her. All these trails are clearly marked with tags, so just keep pulling your white tags and you'll make your way down to where you're supposed to be. So we were just talking how pretty this will be when this all these trees finally bloom and fill in. Look at those trees, there it goes. There it goes. It'll be so pretty down. We need to come back for sure. Bring our chairs and just... Oh yeah, you could just post up chairs right here and just soak up the sun and just love it. So we do I always carry I always carry a trash bag with us. Really it's if we were to be caught in a rainstorm or something, I could throw everything in it, but we're gonna pick up some trash on the way out. There's quite a bit down here it's kind of kind of a bummer but we always try to leave it better than when we found it so if you pack it in you have to pack it out we'll get uh get going and see see what else there is it's endless like there's just so much to do don't think we weren't going to get the brewskis from the stupid people Not to categorize people or anything because I know how sensitive people are nowadays, but it's interesting how usually the only trash you find on the trail is alcohol or cigarettes. I mean, you know, not generalizing or anything, but uh, if you need alcohol to come on a nature trail to enjoy it, look at you, goody two shoes, boy scout picking up trash. I like 
I like coming here. I like, I like how beautiful this is. I want to keep it that way. That's not being a good two shoes. Just because I got to be a parent and pick up and pick up after somebody, but I don't know. It's just my opinion. Okay, so these are the cabins back by the trailer area. And Babs and I looked this up. I think Babs said these were 160 bucks a night right now. Which those are pretty good size. There's a whole upper loft. There were do it with two families. There easily. was probably 12 people back there that were outside. Oh yeah. You could fit a lot of people in there. I mean, 160 cool bucks thing. a night, and if you split it between two families, that's oh, not yeah. that bad. You can go fishing. You can, oh, kind of, there's a swimming area somewhere. It said. Let's see if we can find the swimming area. I need to do this with my parents. Wow! Look at this. It is so quiet. So this may be a, maybe five minutes, not even five minute drive from the, those cabins that we were just looking at, the cabins and the RVs. And you got this whole swim area. You got the boat launch, so if you did bring a boat, you can launch your boat. But, do you come here with the family and the kids? Because kids can swim for days. Bring the easy up chairs. Yeah, I could bring a little fishing boat. Oh yeah, fishing boat, fishing poles. Kind of random, huh? But, oh, I wonder how deep it is. I wonder if that's pretty deep then, if there are steps and a rail to get out. Look how cool this is, this whole little area. So, you got a couple of bonfire pits down here, drills for use by reservation only. It's kind of cool. Come down here and hang out and have a campfire or two. You got this whole shaded area, you got picnic benches. Oh, the banyo's open for Bev. She's excited. All right, well, this wraps up uh, Rock Island. I think we're going to have to book a cabin. Oh, I think we are for sure. Come what back. is it? 12.53. We left that house at what? Seven ish? Seven ish. So, seven ish. We got out here two hours. We got out here at nine. So, plus the time change back. So, I mean, we spent a good four or five hours out here, and I think, I think we covered a lot of ground, discovered a lot of fun new areas to come. We're definitely coming back. Good time? I had a great time exploring. That's good. Definitely want to come back. Rock Island. Rocks. Well, that's it for Middle Tennessee, y'all. We appreciate you.